The views and opinions expressed on the following program do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of Nash Community College, the Board of Trustees of Nash Community College, or the North Carolina Community College System. We don't need no stinking budget. Oh, no. Well, you buy a hat like this, I'll bet you get a free bowl of soup, huh? I'm not wearing hockey pants. I'm going to make him an offer, Captain. You play ball like a girl! Leon's getting larger. Nothing but pure and simple old-fashioned communism. But I was going into Toshi Station to pick up some power converters. Well, thank you very much. Can I be in charge for a while? Hey guys, welcome to Big Bang Cinema. My name is Isaac Anderson. I'm Tyler. Oh wow, that was more enthusiastic than normal. Mm. That's pretty good. Maybe there's maybe it's a change. I got hope in Hollywood now. What? Yeah, I, I actually have hope for Hollywood now. You have hope for Hollywood? Yeah. I mean, with this week, you know, who wouldn't have hope for Hollywood? I know. But guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, uh, this is a show where we talk about movie news, movie reviews, and everything, everything in between. between. Oh yeah. my goodness, is that the in-between? Yes, the in-between. Oh my goodness, that's so great. So what have you been up to this week? Oh man, um, I really have done nothing. I believe I, I, I played a video game. Oh wow. Yeah, Fallout. A lot oh, of Fallout. Fallout. Wow. And um, make sure my plants are dead. I've been watering those, and then it rained after I watered them. And I have been to work because my hours have been slashed back oh, wow. so bad. That sounds like it's uh, beating you up pretty much. Oh, yeah. A depressing home life. Oh, well. well, speaking about Assault, Justice League oh. just came out with a new trailer. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. And we can watch it? It's just as much of a cluster as you think. Oh, my goodness. So um, we've talked about Justice League a lot on the show. So uh, in case you don't know, uh, Justice League has had a lot of production problems. Like, a lot. And Justice League has been film refilmed about three times over. Apparently, that's so. This is completely rumored. I don't know if any of that's true. And uh, I think we're about to see Henry Cavill's CGI'd lip. Um, maybe that's maybe this was filmed before, but I don't know. But uh, there's just been so many things wrong with this. Uh, Zack Snyder's original vision and I think the original script they weren't very happy with, and they filmed it. And then Zack Snyder unfortunately had to leave because. His daughter committed suicide, and uh, you know our hearts and prayers go out with them uh, because of that. But uh, needless to say, Zack Snyder's not really been on a winning streak with this. Uh, Man of Steel and Batman v Superman had terrible critic reviews. I know. And so I don't think uh, Warner Brothers is feeling this too much. Well, I do have a fun fact about this. What? If you real 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 uh, rearrange the letters in Justice League, you get just Ice You Eagle. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I yeah. would have never guessed that. Yeah, you would have never known that. That's just delicious. Just dice, you eagle. You think about it. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty amazing. If it, it fits perfectly. But, I, like, I, I got a question. You know, yeah. What does Superman put in his, uh, his Coca-Cola? Um, crypto ice. Just ice. Oh. 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 Oh, oh. 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 man. Oh. That's... <laughs> That's a good joke. Uh, it's a very good joke. But, I mean, I, I guess I'm kind of more excited for this. I mean, I can see the justice all around that. Mm -hmm. And Joss Wade was called in to kind of fix it. And, yeah, fix it or try refilm to... Refilm it completely. Refilm it completely, which, I mean, I, I imagine right now, like, undocumented, this makes budget. You know, yeah. unreleased budget is probably massive now. This is probably the most expensive film ever made. Mm -hmm. it, ha it has to be, because I mean, they filmed the movie three times, and if you look at this, like some of the clips are still there from the Zack Snyder uh, original teaser trailer back from Comic Con, but they're not the same. Not. They're like little shots of like where no one's saying dialogue, and they're just shots of like action shots, Ooh. and that's the only thing they say. Like this is completely different. Uh, we'll play. We'll show you something in a little bit. We'll finish. Also, that's not how physics work, according to Mr. Chris over here. Chris, how you doing? You doing good? I'm doing good. You sound super pumped. I do have a question. <laughs> so, yeah, go ahead. How, when, when did the Aquaman learn how to fly? Uh, he was being held by Cyborg. Yeah, but were you watching the trailer? I, I tried I try to figure, it's, it's like so much going on, I can't like, keep I, track of it. It's way too much he, going he, on. He was defying physics. He, he was being held by Cyborg, like, 
the cyborg was holding his arm, but he was still like staying parallel with cyborg. Yeah, yeah, that's what he was talking about defying physics. No, yeah. no also what it could have been was he's using his upper body strength to try to hold himself in place. That's like, still not how physics works. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it'll work like that. I mean, I, you know, the people that like, hang outside the building to hold out like that, and they just hanging there. Massive muscles. I mean, he's super strong. I can probably see it happening. Uh, but, I mean, uh, with more mm. of the production problems, apparently Henry Cavill grew a mustache that he what? wasn't allowed to shave because he was in uh, the new Mission Impossible film. Uh. And they wouldn't allow him to shave, shave it. So they had to CGI, uh, CGI it out frame by frame. And Ben Affleck doesn't like any of the cuts. He hates every single thing they've done. Apparently. This is allegedly. I don't know if it's true. And they just keep, they've rewritten the whole script and refilmed it. And it comes out in three weeks. Ooh. And this is going to be, this is one of the biggest production disasters, like, in a very long time. Right next to, like, the Han Solo movie and stuff. And just take a look at this real quick. This is an image from the first trailer we saw, um, or, like, one of them, uh, the one with the, the white stripes playing on it. Look how kind of sepia tone, how depressing, and how bad this makes you feel. Kind of like, it just makes you feel like it's a rainy day or something like that. It's very Zack Snyder. Now, look at, this is the Joss Whedon version. Oh, shit. You know what that is? That's Silent Hill. They're in Silent Hill. They are uh, fighting in Silent Hill, man. man. Well, it's just so much different. Like, can we go back to the other shot real quick, Chris? Yeah. All right. So look at this. It's not a whole lot going on. I kind of almost respect that. It's like you wouldn't expect Zack Snyder to tone down the like the violence and the action. You know what I mean? But like this other one, the red one, it's like that just looks like so much going on. I feel like there's sirens going off right here. I, there's that, there's and, a and there's, lot going on. And there's like on. creepy nurses with like bandaged up faces with like scalpels coming at them. Not Silent that Hill. looks like Silent Hill. You can't tell that don't look like Silent Hill. It does look a little bit like Silent Hill, but it's more so, I think that's a, there's a lot going on. And I think there's a lot of people at Warner Brothers saying, look, we're having fun. We're having fun. Look, there's colors in this one. Like, mm -hmm. Because the first one just looks bleh and just kind of makes you feel depressed. This one's just like, oh, what's, what's going on? See, I mean, do you really need that much going on in a movie? That, that's no. And I, I think this one's going to have the same problem Suicide Squad had, which is it's going to be a very incoherent story and they've like a really rushed uh, and, and try-hard attempt to try to make people like this. And there's only two characters people are going to care about. Yep, Superman and Batman. Oh, yeah, because you were... You were, but, you were um, how Suicide Squad was about Deadshot and Harley Quinn, the two people keep, people really cared about. Yeah, man. but I mean, Wonder Woman with the success she had, I imagine she'll probably have a larger part yeah. in the film. But I think uh, supposedly now Green Lantern's supposed to be in there. I don't know how they're ever going to shove him in there. But um, um, race I'm, to the Justice League. That's it's ra uh, yeah, uh, race race to the box office they're trying to do. But uh, Hunter, uh, we haven't even asked you. Hunter's on the Hunter cam over there. Hunter, what do you think about this? Mm -hmm. This is him. Oh man, he hadn't shaved either. Huh, that's <laughs> great, Hunter. The beard has ever taken him. Thank you so much. All right. So speaking about harassment, Disney. Uh, it's actually Ooh. released a new Star Wars trailer for The Last Jedi. And let me tell you right now, this is one of the biggest stories of this week, Ooh. if not the biggest. Uh, it's a really slow news week this week, actually. But um, this is the trailer right here. Um, I imagine we've both seen this. Uh, uh, what, what do you think about the trailer? Oh, man, I just feel like it's more stuff. Well, thank you for saying that. It's more. Could you be more specific, please? Um, I would say it, it, it looks like I've seen this before. Before I saw the trailer. Oh, for real? Yeah, I feel like I've seen this like some move back in the 80s almost. It's not Empire Strikes Back. I feel like it's the Empire Strikes Back. I feel like it's going to be Empire Strikes Back 2.0. See, I feel like... I hope it's not. I hope it's something more original see, than I feel, that. I feel like it's going to be the same plot points, and, but it's going to be like, instead of like on a swampy planet, they're in a paradise island. And she goes in the cave and she finds something mysterious, just like Luke went into the cave and oh. found the Darth Vader thing. Oh. Uh, I hope it's different. I, I feel like they're going to go to a casino planet and there's going to be a woman there and that betrays them. And I believe oh, that's yeah. going to be Laura Dern's character. I could be wrong in that. But, um, uh, we, we have some good shots there. Luke actually has some dialogue, which is great. And I know he speaks in the film. I like he does the Joker voice, too. That's, that's and, really nice. Oh, he's Luke Skywalker. He should have done the Joker voice for it. And then uh, Kylo Ren, we get to see him without his mask. It's about time that we get an enemy in Star Wars that has a face that we actually like, and not like some PS4 looking face that Grandma Tarkin had. But, um, so um, as we see here, I think there's a lot of misdirection going on in this trailer. I think they're trying to lead us on to think that they're doing certain things, like he's about to shoot down Leia's ship, uh, like Ray's gonna go with Kylo Ren. I don't think any of this stuff is really gonna happen in the film, or if it is, it's not gonna be how it seems in the trailer. 
Uh, that, that shot's pretty cool right there. Finn going against Captain Phasma. Um, there's some shots in here, you know, like that one. I'm not too crazy about the CGI ice dogs or the porgs, you know, a little bit too. I think they're trying to put some toys in there. Maybe it's some more creatures. I don't know. But uh, Chris, uh, what do you think, man? Do you even care, Chris? I mean, but he refused to speak. <laughs> so. I mean, the trailer looks pretty interesting. It's and it's like you said, Isaac. It looks very. It looks very like misleading. It's like. It's like it's giving you. It's like it's giving you a breadcrumb trail in sort of the purposely the wrong direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To sort of like surprise people when the full film actually comes out. We see these whole situations and like the entire thing spread out. See, I like that though. I mean, I want to be surprised. Yeah, I didn't exactly. want to watch this trailer, but I knew I had to talk about it on the show. Or like surprise is Empire Strikes Back. Oh, I, I hope it's not Empire Strikes Back. I've heard that so many times. I want it to be something different. Mm -hmm. but I have a feeling you're going to see very vague plot points on this. But uh, yeah, I'm really excited about this. Hunter. Oh, think? that's great, man. Thanks. You're such a gopher. Uh, but, I'm, I'm just glad that um, I'm just glad that we'll have a trailer that like doesn't show like half of the movie and shows exactly how the movie's going to go. I bet that the, uh, mark my words right now. I bet that trailer that we just saw is has a clip from nearly every act of the film. Mm. I bet that's like the whole film, but like really condensed down a little bit. I feel like when you walk in the theater. Then you're gonna see that. I feel like the Snoke thing's probably the last act of the film. I think I, Snoke looked really good in the uh, in here. I, we're finally gonna see him in his real life form. He's not mm -hmm. a giant, thank God. He's just a some shriveled old man. Yeah, shriveled old man. And uh, the CGI on his face actually looks a lot better than the last time because mm -hmm. he looked like a cartoon in the um, The Force Awakens to me. But yeah, well, I'm he, very excited. He was a cartoon in The Force Awakens. He's a hologram. I know he was a hologram, but he was supposed to look realistic at first, and that was really. I hope hopefully mm -hmm. we get to see. Him. Uh, a little bit more of him. I feel like we're going to see the Knights of Ren in this. Uh, there's going to be a lot of cool things going on. But um, but yeah, anything else to add? Uh, yeah, I've seen this before. Uh, uh, well, speaking about allegations, I think, I think it's about time Ooh. we talk about this. Sylvester Stallone uh, is actually going to be directing Creed 2. I know, who would have guessed it? Mr. Rubberface himself, Sylvester Stallone, is going to be directing. Mm -hmm. um, Dolph Lundgren, I believe, is going to be uh, fighting Apollo Creed's son. Uh, Adonis Creed, and he's going after the man that killed his father. And I think that, that seems like a pretty interesting story. I you must know. break you. He's like, break. I know, is it going to go to Soviet Russia or is it going to be like, you know, North Korea now? And then, you know, I, I, well, Dolph Lundgren's in it, probably not. But I mean, no, uh, what, what do you think about this? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited, I guess. <laughs> you sound pumped. Yeah, I'm very pumped. For I, so, did you like Creed? I thought it was better than the fa last few uh, Rocky movies. Oh, it's definitely. I mean, I really think it was uh, something that really invigorated it the just franchise. Didn't have Burgess Meredith in it. Uh, well, I mean, I really enjoyed it to the point where I think it's uh, something that kind of gave the franchise a new kind of start. Get him, Rocky. Wah, 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 wah. You know? Oh, uh, oh you're talking about his wife? Oh, no, man. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on. Well, he's dead. Yeah, well, Spoiler actually, alert. He is dead. But, um, you know, Rocky has a really good kind of character arc in that story that I thought was really uh, heartwarming and uh, heartwarming. touching. Touching, very yeah, touching. it's very touching. But um, uh, Chris, have you ever seen uh, Creed? The movie. Have you ever Creed? seen any Rocky movies? I, I've never seen either of those. No okay. way! That's wrong. Not man. sports sports movie fan. Or uh, how about you, Hunter? Uh, have you seen them? No, uh, probably not. Oh, sorry. We're we're making uh, we're making uh, Andrew go crazy on the cameras. We'll we'll leave on Hunter for a second because we worked hard for this. Wait for something to say really smart. Say something really smart. Oh uh, well, uh, I don't I don't know. He's he's chewing on some nuts right now. But um, <laughs> shut up. So uh, Sylvester Stallone <laughs> directing Creed. I'm 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 excited for this. Oh I mean, no. I think Sylvester Stallone's a pretty good director. Granted, he does stillier things like the Expendables movies and you know. Oh all that. yeah. I, I, I mean, the, like what I like about this Expendable movies. Yeah, I mean he did a good job in them. Because you know, it took him all that effort to smile through all the Botox. I mean, <laughs> it, it, I love oh. seeing that. He's like, oh, come on, there you go. There you go. That's about all. Oh, yeah. look, look at that Botox right there. Okay. How much you bet that, I don't know, like, he's trying to smile there, too. That's how many million he spent on his face. Yeah, how many million? <laughs> Five million. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm really excited for this. I think he actually is a pretty good quality director. I believe he directed another Rocky movie, too. Didn't he direct Rocky IV? I I guess I mean only problem I got they all blend into one big movie for me. They kind of do, but I mean you kind of see. I know he like helped write most of them. 
Mm. Uh, yeah, I think he wrote the first one. I could be wrong, but um, I, I feel like he wrote the Expendables. I, he probably did. Yeah, I feel like I feel like that was that was hey, part of his. Hey, they all they can't all be winners, man. They all they can't, can't all be winners. But I mean, I think this is a really good choice. I'm really excited for it. But um, guys, if you have any opinions on this or anything, please leave a comment at facebook.com/studio67ncc. We'd love to hear your uh, your thoughts on it. Oh lord! And, uh, yeah, but see, this last one is probably the oh. biggest one. It's a little bit of a touchy subject. Oh, talking about that big scandal. I'm talking about the really scandalous. Taika Waititi uh, is going to be possibly directing Akira. Oh, so, I mean, because the biggest had, story of the week. I mean, because I know it was a big scandal where they had like did the move and they cast everybody white for the film. Oh, I mean, because because you know because this thing has been in production for the last thirty years. I mean, I it's think. definitely the biggest scandal of the week. But um, but yeah, I mean, it, um, like you said, you know more about uh, Akira than me. Akira. Um, I think we talked about it a few times on the show. Okay, I'm about to tell you something really interesting about this. Okay. If you zoom in during the, the uh, during the movie, it says "Good for your health, bad for your education." It's the same jacket that uh, that um, John C. Riley had on uh, King, uh, King Kong. Oh no way! Yeah, same jacket. If you watch this movie and you go back and watch King Kong, you're like, "I remember that. I saw that. I saw that." Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, because uh, he, he's straight out of the '80s or like the, the '60s or '70s, right? Oh no, this is the '80s. Oh, this was the '80s. Well, actually, this is the future. Oh, well, it was but this, like, this thing was made in the 80s, but it was like Ooh. about the future. But um, yeah, t uh, Taika Waititi, he, uh, he directed What Do We Do in the Shadows? He's directing Thor Ragnarok. Mm -hmm. Well, he directed Thor Ragnarok because it's already done. Mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, uh, he, he's a very good quality director. He's also been in uh, stinkers like uh, The Green Lantern. He's also an actor. So I mean, I think mm -hmm. he's a really good choice for this. Also because he said he was going to choose uh, pretty much all no-name Asian cast members to, um, to kind of take this See, over. I mean, you can't have the movie called Akira and then you have like... like uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Uh, play it being Akira, you know what I mean? It's just, it doesn't fit. Or like you have Scott Johansson playing M Matoko Kusanagi. I mean, I it's just, it just doesn't work. Well, it, it de it, they definitely did it because... Matoko Kusanagi. Th I think they feel like white actors are like the main draw. Okay, okay what I've heard about this, okay, what I've heard about this right now is I looked into it. I actually, as soon as you told me, I went back and was like, why do they whitewash these anime and uh, Asian centric films? Or if they do like a movie in Asia, the main character is a white guy. So I looked it up and they said there's, there's no bankable Asian actors out there. And that's what I was getting at, yeah. See, but another part about it is, is that there's not bankable because no one ever casts them as a lead. They don't have a chance to get in the spotlight because if, if there's, there's like five Asian actors, they cycle through for, for like starring films. That's Jackie Chan. That's Jet Li, you got Lucy Liu, mm -hmm. you got um, Ming Na Wen, and you got uh, Maggie Q. You know, mm -hmm. they, they're just these five actors they circle, circle through. And then you know, you know, and once in a while you'll have uh, like a, like uh, Watanabe. Mm -hmm. He'll be in there, but he's usually the exposition, or he's there to like talk about like, he, he gives exposition. I mean, so he is Basil Exposition in yeah, basically but, any film he's in. I mean, he, he just gives exposition, that's all he does. I mean, yeah. look, look at Godzilla. Exposition. Look, I mean, it's almost every single one of his films. Yeah. I mean, hopefully this one won't be like that. And he also wants to base it on the manga instead of the anime. Which is going to be a whole lot longer. <laughs> it's going to be a whole lot longer. Well, maybe they'll condense it down. It's kind of like, it's got a different story plot than... Yeah. Than I mean, uh, hopefully, uh, I mean, you're a little bit more of a fan of it than I am. But yeah. I believe it's going to be something really cool. Taika Waititi is a quality director. I can't wait to see what he did with Thor Ragnarok. And I hope he gets this job, especially Which, if Thor Ragnarok's good, he'll probably get it. And if you've seen the original Blade Runner and you watch a key, you're going to be like, oh, that's from Blade Runner. That's from yeah. Blade Runner. I saw that in Blade Runner. It's all Blade Runner. Because uh, the, Blade Runner, the guy, guy who actually directed the original film said he got the inspiration from the film from watching Blade Runner. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, a lot, like a lot of people around that time did, I guess. Yeah. But, uh, guys, thanks so much for watching. Do um, you have any comments, questions, or concerns? Please leave a comment at facebook.com slash studio67ncc. .edu. No, it's not .edu. Don't confuse the people. It's okay. written on the screen. We'd oh. love to hear your thoughts, guys. So, uh, as long guys, as they're coherent thoughts. As long as they're coherent thoughts. All right, guys, uh, we're going to take a really quick break. When we come back, we're going to highlight something uh, oh, really... Uh, I love really highlights. I used to have all the magazines back when I was a kid. I had all of them. I had a little watch for it. Uh, just go break. Okay. Do you know Nash Community College offers 12 degree programs entirely online? Are you interested in information technology? Explore information technology systems, network management, system security, healthcare informatics, or web design and administration. 
These two-year programs are only a few of the online associate degrees offered through Nash Online. Students receive the same quality instruction and resources as on-campus students without ever stepping foot on Nash's campus. Learn more about Nash Online today at online.nashcc.edu. Hey guys, welcome back to Big Bang Cinema. My name is Isaac Anderson. I'm Tyler. Haven't changed, haven't moved. Haven't changed the shirt either. No. Okay, guys, if you've been watching, which you haven't, um, so could you please tell me how many times this shirt has been worn on the show? Uh, I just well, want to know. Okay, uh, probably the sixth time. I, I'm, I'm going, I'm going ten. Okay, because, you know. I'm it, going at least a third of the shows you're wearing that shirt. Because, uh. Under it, the poncho you used to wear. You have to remember this too, man. This is an Academy Award winning film. Yeah, but it's not in my heart. It, it, it won an Academy Award. I mean, honestly, it did. I mean, you can't say it didn't. It did. It, it did. Won but, an uh, Academy Award. So, um, I think it's the most hilarious shirt I own. It is. I, I wouldn't wear it. But guys, time for our movie highlight of the week, which is Blade Runner. Uh, the one from 1982. Which cut? Oh, wrong one, Chris. There we go, Blade Runner. I, it's, uh, I had that post. Let's talk about the final cut, okay? And we can talk a little bit about the, uh, the theatrical cut, but we don't have too much time left. Um, we can talk a little bit about in oh, Quick Flicks, which uh, um, comes on every Friday at 9. Uh, we film it after this. But, uh, guys, in case you don't know, Blade Runner is, uh, takes place in the future of 2019 in Los Angeles. Two and, years uh, from now. I know, two years from now. And uh, Rick Deckard, played by Harrison Ford, uh, is in charge of hunting down what are called replicants, which are basically clones of humans that are way stronger and faster than we can ever be. And they, they're basically used for slave labor uh, on off-world colonies. And, but they're illegal on Earth because there was a huge uprising and uh, they don't want to, you know, any more trouble with them. So the they're one, basically sociopaths. Yeah, they're basically a sociopaths. They, they develop their own emotions and they, want, they just want to live. And when they get on Earth, um, these guys called Blade Runners like Harrison Ford, his character Rick Deckard, uh, they have to go hunt him down and kill him. So uh, he gets recruited to go kill down four replicants in this movie, and that's the plot. Uh, so uh, do, you like, um, do you like this movie? I do like this film. Uh, it's very hard to find people that don't like this film. I'm not as crazy about it as most people. I'm not like, okay, now, a, um, you know, Blade Runner or Die. There's cuts in it that were like, I did, wasn't too keen on, mm -hmm. but I feel like, you know, I finally saw the right one, and it was perfect. Which one was the right one? Okay, I'll see. There's four cuts. It was the one that he, he didn't voice over because he got really racist in the voiceover. Oh, he said the N-word. Yeah, I mean. a few times. And then um, I, I didn't like the one where it was the unicorn. But that's, that's all of them, and the, besides the uh, uh, theatrical cut. The, it was the one without the unicorn, without him voicing over, and it was the one where, um, oh, so that was the, I would say that's the, the 90s cut. No, the director's cut has the unicorn in it. It was the one without the unicorn. There's not a single one without the unicorn, and the one that is has the voiceover. I saw one without a unicorn. But, but let's, let's talk a little bit more about the film. We'll talk about the, the voiceover and the unicorn in just a minute. But, uh, so uh, Harrison Ford, apparently him and Ridley Scott didn't get along very well. Ridley Scott directed this film. And um, yeah, I think Ridley Scott had a lot of ideas in there that were really awesome. He, uh, his directing style is really kind of... Nice. The biggest problem I have with this movie is that it's it, really slow and the story isn't as compelling as I feel like it could be. You know what I mean? Like, well, I mean, once you get the right cut. Well, once you get the right cut. The theatrical cut's ruined by Harrison Ford basically telling you what's going on. I like the subtlety that's in the final cut and the director's cut. Uh, and also, it's the best effects that's ever been in like the post-digital era, I believe. Yes. And they still hold up now because they actually use real things. It took hours and hours to try to get these things. I like, mean, if you look at this, Every anime that came out after like 82, every cyberpunk, every futuristic uh, dystopian noir film looks just like this. Well, it took a lot from Asian culture too. Like Los Angeles is very Asian. Because uh, he kind of expected that, you know, at the time Japan was kicking off big industrial. This was before it was the Great Japanese Depression. Mm -hmm. they, you know, they were, pick, I mean, they, they were going to be the masters of technology. So. They kind of implemented that you know, in the future. Almost most technology is going to be produced in like 
Japan. Yeah, I mean, and that's the, I mean, just seeing that shot, that's amazing that like that they got that oh. without any sort of computer. Um, see, and th there's not that that black line you usually see. Yeah, I know, and there's no matte lines in there. Mm. I mean, I, it's so impressive that they did that without any sort of like computer uh, manipulation. Especially considering what their budget was too. Yeah, their budget wasn't that much. Do you remember what it was? It was I think it was, I want to say 60, 60 million. Which isn't that much even compared to now, is it? I think due to inflation, this was about a hundred, hundred million dollar, no, hundred twenty million dollar movie. It went over budget, I know that, but uh, yeah, so as the movie goes on, there's a character played by uh, the actress Sean Young, who plays um, uh, Rick Deckard's kind of love interest, and she the plays a replicant that's very realistic and lifelike, and she doesn't know she's a replicant. And she's got all the memories of the, the corporate, the corporate head's niece. Yeah. So, so she, her past and everything is just, is human, so she yeah. thinks he's human. Um, and also a big thing I've heard people say they don't really have any chemistry in the movie. There's one like really, uh, there, there's one really kind of dicey scene where he basically like forcibly kisses her in a, you know, in a hotel room. I mean, we never hear of that now in society, but I mean, it's just, um, but yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's a weird scene. But the way this movie ends, uh, let's talk about this. Roy Batty is the best character in this film, and that's, uh, that's Rugger Howard's character. And he is by far the best part of this film. I hear yes. some Ford's pretty good in it, you know. Um, but he, goes he, beyond. he shines. He shines in this film. Especially he, considering most of his dialogue was his own dialogue. He made, he made it up. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> and uh, especially that last scene. We're going to spoil a 30-year-old movie for you right now. The, the tears in the rain speech was completely improvised. He even stabs his own hand through, like the Christ metaphors and everything. Um, and he just basically wanted Deckard to feel how it felt to be a replicant, how it felt to be someone in his position, to be a slave. See, and it's so powerful. And the whole fact that like Ridley Scott wants that character to be a replicant is so dumb. It ruins see, the whole point. And here's another thing got about it is like, Deckard killed his friends. Yeah. And you know, and it was Sean Young did kill his other friend. But you know, he killed his friends, hunting them down, trying to murder them. And he had the chance to get his revenge and just kill him. Mm. But you know, just because you know he's about to die, he's like, I'm, but he he spared his life. It's and, a very powerful moment. I mean, it was just like you know he had. I mean, because you know they're, they're called sociopaths. But the, the man he spared his life, and he sat there and gave him the whole speech about you know the t tears in the rain about the things he's seen that humans would not you know never got the chance to like to experience, and then he died just wanted somebody to remember him. Yeah, and, and it's just, it, it's such a great moment that like Harrison Ford, the one that's been in charge of killing all these replicants that he doesn't really think is human, just realized that, he, that he's more human than, you know, anything that he's ever met or seen. And it's such a great moment. Mm -hmm. And the ending in the theatrical, uh, theatrical cut kind of sucks, but also the ending is kind of weird and the director's cut with the unicorn thing. But guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please uh, like us on Instagram. It's, I believe it's uh, Instagram. Um, as the name is Studio uh, 67 NCC, I believe. It's, it's, it's fairly new. Uh, it's Studio 67 oh, we NCC. Got Instagram? We got an Instagram. Studio uh, 67 NCC Instagram. on Instagram. Uh, Studio 67 NCC at uh, Facebook. Edu. No, no, don't say dot edu. Okay. Uh, Studio 67 NCC on Facebook and then uh, youtube.com slash uh, Nashcom College. Nash but, uh, wow, that is, that is a lot. <laughs> that is like that much to type in my, yeah. my browser. That's just too much. Okay, but guys, thank you so much for watching. Next week, we're watching The Foreigner with Jackie oh, Chan. Oh, no. I saw it. I can't wait to tell you about it. Okay, so uh, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm Isaac Anderson. I am Tyler. Stay lovely. Stay for quick Stay clips. classy, San Diego. Oh, bye, Hunter. Oh. Uh.